Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration with Crestorio 2. And in the last stream I made some progress towards getting Astro Science 3 up and running and here it is. I've put in some machines along here and fed some belts to them and there is nothing on those belts. So thank you very much for watching. No, okay, let's let's have a look into why there's nothing on these belts. So, yes, Astro 3. There's a few things you need for Astro 3. So we'll have a look, have a look in FNEI first and look at the look at the uh, look at the, making the catalogs. So once again, there's another two types of telescope data we need. So we need to pick up radio wave and gamma ray observation data. And each of those requires their own type of telescope. So one of the things I've been doing, one of the things I did over here, was add on to the top of the uh, top of the Tower of Doom over here. So we're now make, now trying to make the, uh, which, one, which one is this? Is this the radio, tele yeah, the radio telescope and the gamma ray telescope? So this is sort of, this, this, this is basically okay. And we, as you can see down here, we've managed to make some of each of those. But there is an intermediate product that's required to finish these off that isn't currently working. And that is down here where we're making uh, making these aeroframe scaffolds. In space exploration, each of the exotic materials that you use has a number of different steps you go through as you're processing it. So first, you'll make the beryllium ingots, for example, which are be, um, coming in, where are they? Yes, they're coming in up here. The These ingots, you can tell because they're sort of loaf tin shaped. They're going into the machine here that chops them up into plates. So plates are great. You, that's the that's that's what I would think of as the first tier of things you you you, you, may, you, you use the beryllium for. Then up here, you may remember this from last time. We're making iron sticks to coat, and then wrapping beryllium around those iron sticks in order to make beryllium sticks. Or they, are they, is that what they're called? Aeroframe poles. Okay, they've got a slightly posher name, but they're basically they they are beryllium sticks, or at least they're beryllium coated sticks. Those are then brought up here. So this is the second tier, and that's used for making these astro doodly no weird noise generator things, and also for the for the second tier of of, um, uh, of telescopes, the, the what, what were these microwave and uh, X-ray. So that yeah, so so you use the second tier for those. Then we need to generate the third tier, and that's made by combining one of the uh, several of those poles. I think uh, yeah, four of those poles with some cryonite and an immersium plate. Now, cryonite, we actually seem to have a reasonable supply of at the moment. That's fairly healthy. But immersion plate, we are completely out of. So that is a problem. Uh, that said, we did manage to make... Um, let's have a look at how many have we made. We've made 1,509 of these. So that's not done too badly. It's made quite a lot of them before we ran out of the immersion plate. That was probably out of whatever just happened to be sitting on the bus before we got started. And that allowed me to, uh, to get at least a few of these made. So we, we've been flowing this up the bus, as you can see here, and feeding it into these machines. So yeah, along here we've got, this is like like most of the other things along here, it's taking in the sort of normal things we're used to. So we've got the heat shield tiles, we've got the assembly machines, and we've got the low density structures. And those are things that go into practically every machine we've been building along here. So that's, that's dead standard, and that's why we've got this bus set up the way it is. And we've got those three things on the first two rows over here, because they were the first things we started to put in. Then we did also need the, um, the advanced mirror things, uh, multifaceted mirrors, what are they called? Uh, multi-spectral mirrors and we are making those on this on this um, on this bus so those are being made somewhere down here I, I forget where they're being made here and pumped up here now at this point we probably could remove that because we are making them elsewhere in the factory and they I believe they're probably available on the train system but this was put in before that was there and you know it ain't broke so I'm not gonna bother fixing it especially as to be honest these we don't use all that many of these because it's this is just for making infrastructure machines now yeah maybe in theory we should come along here and put productivity modules into it, all of these that we can just to just to eke that little bit more out of the supplies but to be honest most of the time these buildings aren't running um perhaps these ones should be a bit more important because they're going to be run a bit more but most of the time yeah we're going to produce maybe 50 telescopes or something like that and then the machines can just go to sleep and stay like that for for a good long time so i'm not too worried about the exact efficiency of, 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 the, of the system along here um, so that's the yeah that's that one mirrors and then and then these aeroframe scaffolds that are being that are being a problem because of the immersion as we discussed. Then up here similar sort of thing. Um, it's, in fact, basically very very similar recipe. Um, we've got again got the um, got the got the multi spectral mirrors. We've got the assembly machines. We've got the low density structures. But we also need radars for this, and that was really frustrating because we don't have radars up here in space at all. We have we have radar Mark twos. Uh, there's a few of those scattered around. I I don't know. They're they're quite widely spaced because you don't need a lot of them um, because they've got such a big coverage area. But there's a handful of those around and that's what's caught that's what's giving us the um the radar coverage that we have out here as you can see there's a big amount covered over here these, these things have a, have a have a very wide uh, coverage area but we weren't bringing up radar ones because we just didn't need them 
So I came in along here and as usual I added in a request on the shopping list. So we're now asking for 100 radar mark ones and someone stuck in some logistic robot requests as well because um, uh, they, those are getting destroyed due to some bad decisions we made. <laughs> I'll, I'll talk about them in a little while I suspect unless I, unless I completely forget. <clears throat> um, Yes, so what happens then? The, yeah, the, so the, the, the radars come up. I've, I've only asked for a hundred of them at a time because we don't need a great deal of them. So that means each time a rocket comes up, it'll have a hundred radars in it. They'll rattle down here, bop, 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 down the system over here. And there's, there's going to be a video coming out fairly soon on how to build one of these. So I won't go into it again. But then that gets dropped out onto the onto the belt here, and like like everything else, it's shipped out, shipped down the down the bus, and then can go up here. And as you can see, we don't have an enormous number of these. In fact, the the, the length line of radars only comes to about here, and that's because, to be honest, we don't need that many. I'm tempted to turn off the the uh, the request for them again now because the number of them there are here, we need. Okay, we need 10 radars for each telescope, but we don't need an enormous number of telescopes. So, like, 10, 20 would probably be enough. So, we probably have more than enough of these radars now. So, we could, could turn that off and, and it wouldn't it wouldn't be too much of a worry. But anyway, we I managed to bring those up. And, yeah, there's an extra sort of, an extra belt botched in along here on the outside of it. I've had to trim away a little bit of the um, the solar over here. But I thought, yeah, let's snake it around over on the side here. Why not? It, it, it's sort of, it's entertaining to, to put a little bit of spaghetti in there. And that's got those radars up there. Um, and, oh, and, um, yes. Yeah, that, that's coming later. We'll talk about that in, in, in probably tomorrow's video. So, yes, that was the that was the first step of getting towards making the making the tier three catalogs because we need in order to make radio wave observation frames. We need blank, blank observation frames. We need to put them in a radio telescope. That didn't come as a surprise at all. That's that's pretty bog standard. Uh, that'll make those. And then you can turn them into the radio wave radio wave observation data, which is hard to say. Next one, gamma rays. Fine, build a gamma ray telescope and, sho and shove gamma ray observation frames in there. Oh wait, you also need a gamma ray detector. So that's going to be interesting. Um, so we're going to need to make these as well, which is a multispectral mirror. Not too much of a problem. Beryllium plate, we have plenty of that. Well, we have at least some of that around. We should, there should be plenty of that coming over from Telos, so that should be fine. Cryonite slush. I think somebody no I, th I think I asked about this and it turned out nobody was making this on the on the bus um, and then finally chemical gel which is being made over here somewhere so we can we can pipe that in by train that's fine so this one not too difficult because I think is it over here that yes here we're making the mirror so I can just pull them from here over drop them off in here and I think I might already be doing that actually Yes, here we go. So we've already got the mirrors, we've already got the beryllium, we just need to make cryonite slush somewhere and we need to bring in chemical gel. So that's that's not too much of a problem. Not too worried about that. So yeah, this is going this is going quite well so far. So then I, then I looked at the uh, dark matter data, and that requires gravitational lensing data, which is one of the ones made along here from these things. So we. We've got, we've got a decent flow of that coming in now because I put in some extra machines along here, but that's something I'm going to be supposed to. So we should be talking about later if I'm going to keep this, this video with a, with a bit of structure. And then we're going to need negative pressure data as well. And this one, uh, so, so yeah, we need we need the negative pressure data in order to make the dark matter data. But also we need the negative pressure data for itself just to go into the science packs. So, But making these requires, oh, it says airframe scaffold things again. Right, okay. So that's potentially going to be a bit of a problem. And astrometric data. Now we've got lots of, we've hopefully got lots of astrometric, astrometric data. And yes, this belt is now nice and full. Uh, we've got plenty of it coming out here. We've got two machines running. That seems to be quite capable of keeping up. So yeah, astrometric data seems to be absolutely fine. But these aeroframe scaffolds, these are going to be a little bit tricky. Now, my first instinct was to go, okay, so we're going to we're gonna need those. Right, I'll, I'll whack in a, a machine in over here that will pull in the, um, all the bits and pieces it need. We're going to need, okay, so we're going to need steel, we're going to need beryllium. Uh, fine, we've got the beryllium. Uh, sorry, iron. Do we have iron? Oh, we probably don't have iron. We're going to need to, okay, we're going to need to bring in iron. We're going to need to bring in, um, we're going to need to bring in, uh, we've got the beryllium already, sorry. Uh, we're going to need to bring in cryonite. I think, I don't think we've got any of that. And we're going to need to bring in the immersion plates. Uh, make the airframe scaffolds here, feed them into the machines. Fine. Then, um, I was talking about this, and it was pointed out, I forget who by, but somebody pointed out that actually, that's not, not the best of ideas. Um, what we should be doing is making these aeroframe scaffolds down on Norvis, because we can do that in these machines, in the, um, in the assembly machine threes. So these, having these ones in here means you can do this on Norvis. Having these two means you can do it in space. So this recipe mean, can be done in either place. And if you do it down on Norvis, then you can pump your machines full of productivity modules. And so because we're so short of immersion plate, we're quite short of cryonite, and we don't have an, quite the unlimited supply of beryllium we might want, we were thinking that maybe it would make a bit of sense to do this down on Norvis. So then I went down to Norvis and I spent some time down there faffing around and trying to trying to build up 
uh, various 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 um, machine arrays. So over here, what have we got? Well, we've got. Oh, this is broken. That train should not be stuck there. Um, I've obviously put those numbers in wrongly, and I'm going to um, blame somebody else for that. I'm not sure who, but I'm going to blame somebody else. Right. <laughs> so yes, this so this is doing what I described. Here we are making the um, here we are making the aeroframe scaffolds down on Norvis. And as you can see, I've been able to put in tier three productivity modules into all of this. So from the from this step alone, we're getting an extra 31% productivity, and that's pretty good given that we're given some of this stuff is quite expensive. So that's that's rather nice. I'm happy with that. It's work. It's it's. It's, it's, yeah, it's there. It's working. And down here, we've done the same down here. It turns out you can't put productivity modules in um, machines turning ingots into plates, so those have just been speeded. Uh, but these ones here are where we're making the rods. Again, to save on the... Um Save on the iron and to save on the beryllium. We're doing these. We're doing these in, in with productivity modules as well. So we've got a nice steady flow of those coming out here like that. Uh, we've got the iron being chopped up into into plates here, being fed in at the bottom, and then I balance it all up. So we've got these four sets of these modules. So each along here, we've got we've got one machine. I don't know how, how clear it is, but these 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 ones making iron poles and these ones are making beryllium poles. Uh, so that that's hence the different colours, which might not be very obvious. But it turns out that one machine making these is enough to keep. Two, three, four, five, six machines making these, given the tier three productivity modules. So that's working nicely. It's producing those, and that is enough to keep eight of these machines running across the top here, um, at least in theory, when there is enough of all the other ingredients coming in. So over on for all of these, we need we need the supplies to be brought in. So down here, we've got a train bringing in um, iron ingots, and then apparently jamming up because these numbers need looking at. Uh, then we've got over here we would eventually in theory we, we would like to have a train bringing in the beryllium ingots to here as well and then they can be brought in and then we'll have a nice steady supply of them we can't do that at the moment because we don't have beryllium on we don't have beryllium on Norvis really we have a little bit of it in the in, uh, available um, in pl specific places like this but what we're doing is as you saw then we're bringing it in by delivery cannon from Talos shoving it into this warehouse which I sincerely hope I've limited I have limited it but not as much as I probably should have done um, and then that's being passed out along here so this is this is acting as quite a deep um, beryllium sink at the moment but it's coming in faster than it's being used so that's fine up here we've got the same sort of thing with uh, cryonite that's being fed in and there's, there's, there's still a cryonite shortage but we've got we're asking for rather a lot of it here so we'll 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 see We'll, we'll see how long it takes to actually fill it up. Uh, Tristan is off trying to get us more of it, so that's going to be okay. But eventually, yes, we would like to have a, a plentiful supply of it and just be able to bring it in a train load at a time rather than faffing around with delivery cannons. But that's for the future. Then, up here, we have the problem. This one is where the immersion plates are coming in, and we don't have enough of those. So as you can see, none, of, none in the warehouse, none in the delivery cannon, none on the belts. It's just all very, very sad. So, yeah, well, we're going to need to have a, have a look at why we've got such a shortage of that. That said, up here, we do seem to have some of the, uh, whatchamacallum, it's being made, the aeroframe scaffolds. So what I should be doing here is feeding them into the uh, into the warehouse over here like this, and then they can be made ready, and eventually, and eventually we'll get this set up to request a train. And the reason we want this to be on the train system rather than just possibly putting these into delivery cannon, firstly is because I suspect you probably can't delivery cannon them. So these are going to be going up in the standard rocket, I think, and then goodness knows how we're going to be getting them over. But we'll find we'll find a way. Uh, Factorio uh, finds a way, as they say. Um, but the reason that the main reason they're being put into the train system over here is because the other thing I did while I was playing around down on Norvis was set up this system over here, which is the same sort of general idea. We've got steel coming in here on this one though, and that's coming in by train, and that one seems to have worked, worked fine. We've got a sensible amount of steel in the warehouse, yes, we've got a sensible amount of steel in the warehouse, and we haven't actually get, gained an additional unexpected train, but sure, I don't know what's going on there. Uh, we've then got some machines here chopping the steel up into plates, that's fine. Then up here, in theory, we are making low density structures, and we're doing this with the more effect, the, the other recipe. And this other recipe is the one that uses glass, plastic. Well, let's 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 look in FNEI because this will give us a much better comparison. So, low density structures. There are two ways of making these. This is the traditional way, and the one we've been using up until now um, because we've been able, because we've because because we could. Uh, so this takes in plastic, it takes in steel, it takes in copper. But notice it's 10 plastic, 2 steel and 10 copper for one low density structure. If we flick over to the Mark II recipe, then it's only 2 plastic and 2, two steel to make 2 low density structures. So it's using a tenth of the amount of plastic and it's using, this, uh, and it's using half as much steel because this is double on the output. But in, and then instead of the um, instead of the copper instead of ten copper, it's using 
two glass or one glass per thing and then one aeroframe scaffold and then half an aeroframe scaffold for each one of these so it's going to be we're going to have a lot more of the, we're going to be able to churn these out a lot more quickly because they're going to be a lot less input dependent once we have a, a ready supply of the aeroframe scaffolds and those absolutely require the immersion plates so that's giving us a bit of a problem there but once we get the immersion plates up and running nicely then we will have a nice steady supply of these low density structures and we'll be able to turn off this system up here which is currently as you can see well it was completely out of plastic but and, 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 and copper as well blimey but trains of the, trains of both of those have just arrived but uh, yes this is sinking enormous quantities of, um, of, of of plastic especially but apparently copper as well <clears throat> and we just can't we just can't keep up with it the uh, the plastic the plastic supply is not sufficient to keep to keep this running to keep this happy and so that's why we're thinking that maybe shifting over to at least producing some of them from the uh, from the immersium recipe and the cryonite and the beryllium the, the aeroframe scaffold recipe is going to be a good thing now this is this system over here is obviously a lot bigger than the one I've built down here but this one can be quite easily expanded. I mean, as you can see, there's there's three belts coming out of each of these uh, stations. There could easily be a lot more. Um, we could have a lot more iron, sorry, steel chopping going on if we needed to. And so we can just put in another row of these here and another. And then, oh dear, there's something in the way. But we could probably squeeze in one across the top of here if we're desperate. Or um, or even just double the length of them, run some belts down the sides of it and have, have another set coming out over here and here and here. There is plenty of room for expansion over here is what I'm saying. So this system here is going to allow us to produce all of the all of the low density structures we need in massive massive quantities once we sort out all of the other problems so yes other problems as you see as we said over here the limiting factor currently is going to be the immersion plate coming through the yes the immersion plates coming through so let's have a quick jaunt over to taras with it with an r which is where all of the immersion plate is coming from as you can see over here we have we we have uh, lots and lots of immersite crystals actually. This this belt is completely full. We've we've satisfied all of the places that are asking for the crystals, but the plates are coming along in what I'm going to call a steady dribble, and then they're coming down here and they're being fed into two separate machines down here. This one is firing at uh, somewhere on Norvis. That's not my area. I don't know what that's doing. I let's have a look. What are, you, what, what are you being used for? So you're flowing into here. Ah, okay, this is going onto the main bus where they're flowing all the way down here in occasional bursts of, like, a stack's worth. And then they're, they're, they're going onto here. Oh, yes, and then they're being used all the way down there. There's no, no. And then they're being used all the way down here to make some of the more advanced belts. We, as You may have noticed the odd bit of green belt here and there. So that's what that's where, where those are going. So let's go back over here. So that is hogging most of them. They're mostly going in here. And then this one is firing at that one we looked at just now, where we're going to be trying to make it into the low-density structures. So let's have a look back up here. So we can follow this belt back, 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 round to here. And here is the system that is supposed to be making the immersion plates. And if we look in one of these machines, you can see we've got plenty of the fine immersite powder. And to be honest, that was the I was expecting it to be due to a, a lack of um, immersite throughput. But no, there is plenty of immersite. Um, Mark has, been, um, has built this system up. Sufficient, sufficiently uh, well to be able to, to that that isn't the problem currently the problem is the rare metals and those are supposed to be pouring up this belt here going into the processing facility and being cooked along with the emocyte powder in order to make the um, in order to make the, the plates but as we see that's not happening so we'll follow that back along here and the funny thing is I mean rare metals we shouldn't be remotely short of those in fact, here is here is a delivery cannons worth of them has just arrived so that's being passed over and that will allow us to make some some um, some, some of the plates down here we've got a, a bare trickle potentially coming in from over here where we're doing the, uh, the core fragment processing but that seems to be a bit idle at the moment probably because we just don't have any core fragments coming in I don't know um, oh yes because yes because we're not processing any immersite up here we're not pulling in any immersite cores down here and therefore we're not we don't have any core chunks coming through to be made to, that we can pull the rare metals out of in order to pass them up here to process this so it's a bit of a sort of a, a, a broken closed loop which sounds like an open loop. Uh, yeah. yeah. Anyway, it's it's a bit of a broken thing there. But so we're, we're topping it up with the uh, with the rare metals from that are being brought over from Norvis, which should be fine because as, I mean I don't know if you remember, but for most of this gameplay, we, we get run through. We've been going, oh, what are we going to do with all this rare metals? We've been turning it into landfill and stuff like that. So surely we've not run out of the raw metal ore. Uh, it's just not. It's just, but it's not being delivered. So let's go back over to Norvis. Have a look over here and find out what's going on with that raw rare, that with that rare metal. So over here we have a system somewhere where 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 is rare metal? Uh, here is rare metal. So yeah, we are loading up some we are loading up some train wagons with it. There is there is is some coming out. Um, 
I'm not quite sure how we're feeding it, to, where we're feeding it to delivery cans. Ah, oh, there is a there is a belt coming down here out of this uh, out of this storehouse that comes down here to a to a row of delivery cannons. So this is where the raw this is where the rare metal is coming from. It'll be one of these two. So uh, this one is firing at yeah, it's this one in fact. This one is firing at Taras. That one's probably yeah somewhere up in Norbit. So these are the ones that are in demand. And then there's some more over here that are shipping them out to other places like also Norbit and also also Norbit and also 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 Norbit. <laughs> lots of different places. This is a silly system, but we'll be... We'll, we'll get away from it eventually, I hope. So yes, we have a trickle of rare metals coming down here, because most of it, because of the... I think probably because we've got four um, things coming out here, and only one coming out here, most of it is going out into these warehouses. And maybe that's maybe that's right maybe that's how we want it because those rare metals are being taken away to be made into blue circuits and we do need to have a steady supply of blue circuits running uh, they may also go to other places as well i i, I wouldn't like to say but yeah over here you see this, this is this is blue circuits no this isn't blue circuits where is that what is that is, is that the um oh i know what that is that's the yes down here that's where we're making the uh, memory card substrates and we need massive quantities of those so it looks like we've got to a point in the game where we've switched over to from from having a massive quantity of rare metals that we don't know what to do with to having a massive demand on the system because this is ripping through them at an appropriate rate apparently um the appropriate rate seems to be a little bit slow but all of the inputs seem to be oh it's right okay most no Yes, here we go. Yes, this belt is full, um, and so these machines are pretty slow, but they're enough that when you combine them all together, you get a full belt coming out down here. Okay, my, um, I, under I understand why that seems to be, seems to be, seemed to be a bit slow then. That's, a, that's okay. Um, and, yeah, same over here. Same recipe, but with speed modules. <laughs> oh, yes, I remember. This, this, this system down here is producing about twice as much as all of this stuff up here because of the magic of speed modules. Anyway, yes, so <laughs> I'm getting slightly sidetracked, as is my way. Um, so, yeah, we do need to keep the rare metals going into these warehouses in order to keep the trains sat... Or in order to keep the, uh, the, the memory card production satisfied because we really, really need those. And so, there's only a little bit trickling over here in order to be sent off to all those other places. Now, perhaps we should tweak the balance a little bit there. It, 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 it's hard to say. Or alternatively, we need to look up here and find out why we have so little rare metal coming through. Um, and this, okay, this this belt here seems to be fairly gappy. Uh, we've got, we're using about two thirds of the furnaces along here, okay. And we're using about half of the uh, these machines down here. And what's the shortage? Why why are these running at about half speed? It's because oh oh it's actually a shortage of raw rare metal. This is okay. So um, <laughs> at this point, actually, a slight confession: this is not the problem I was expecting to find as I was going through here. So we actually literally have a shortage of rare metals coming in. Um, and unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about that unless we go out and start mining them up, which seems like a weird thing to do after we spent so much time turning them all into uh, in, in, into landfill. Um, but that's pouring in here. We are keeping a, a steady 500 in here, roughly. And it's being fed out here at the top about, at about the same speed as coming in, as you can tell, because these belts aren't backing up at all. Um, so, yes, the rare metals, are, or the raw rare metal, rather, is being produced from our core mining over here. We have stopped turning it into, yes, we have completely stopped turning it into landfill, although all of this landfill pretty much did come from the rare metal, so that's a bit of a shame. We could probably have done with stockpiling a bit more of that. Um, but, yeah, we are pulling quite a lot of down to the core mining, feeding it round here, up here, and then into the processing facilities in order to, to try and turn it into rare metals. It's just there's not enough of it so maybe we need more core processing maybe we need to maybe we need to upgrade the productivity modules in all of these to tier threes now they are on they're on tier twos at the moment uh tier threes would probably give us an extra four percent uh eight percent something like that uh so it would be a little bit of a boost um but probably not enough i think putting in more core mining drills probably wouldn't help all that much either there's some rare metals being brought in from uh, from other planets and dropped in by delivery cannon and that's going to be going in but that goes into here so it'll just be passed through into here and it will it will all be added to the same input so it's not that's not that's not going to be a, a way of fixing it we might actually have to go out and you know tap some of these rare metal patches that we've but we've been seeing around the map and just being oh, pff, we're not gonna we're not gonna we're never gonna need that we've got we've got huge stockpiles of it turns out no not so much um so, yeah so putting in some mines on some of these might actually be be necessary and that if you if you told me 
a month ago. There's 7 million there. That'd be a good one. If you told me a month or so or two ago that we we're going to have a shortage of rare metals, I would have laughed in your face because we've been we've just, we just had so much of it pouring out of the core mining over here and just had no... Well, I'm not going to say no use for it, but we'd had so much of it spare that, that, that being in this position seems absolutely ridiculous. So, what I was actually expecting to be the problem when I looked at this was the uh, was the hydrogen chloride that comes in here. Now, we are a bit short of that, to be fair. There's There's not as much in there as as I would like to see, but you can tell, you can see by looking at the belts here, these are running steadily. This this is all flowing straight in here. They're, the, the shortage of hyd of uh, of the raw rare metals is significantly worse. But yes, there is a bit of a shortage of hydrogen chloride. Previously, there was a massive shortage of it because something funny went on up here. I'm I don't entirely one hundred percent understand what went wrong, but we went from we went from this system working to it not working. Now there we had another we had problems with one of these somewhere else where the chlorine where it was supposed to be a closed loop of chlorine, but it turned out that uh, Mark had been going in and stealing out some of the stealing some of the chlorine and not telling anybody, so that broke it. Um, I believe he's fixed that, but we'll look at that uh, later. So up here we are we are a bit short of hydrogen chloride to be honest. We should probably be trying to make a bit more of this. And these machines are all very very sad because they don't have any um, hydrogen. Uh, hydrogen is being made up here through water electrolysis. This has all been speed moduled up to a wonderful level but it's still not remotely fast enough what well, we're just not bringing in sand quickly enough oh crikey okay <clears throat> so yes uh, apparently sand is a problem so we've been we have been finding that we've been churning through an enormous quantity of sand recently because we were using a lot of it to make the uh, the quartz to make the uh, to make the silicon as you can see this is flowing very very solidly um, now there is a train trains within in the in the train and there's another trains within the station and a little bit more so we seem to have we have enough as of right now and now and now. Um, glass is being brought in from uh, by delivery cannon from everywhere, but we seem to have ripped through all of that as well. So, <laughs> amazingly, in one session, we have gone from having so much glass that the whole system jammed up to not having to, to struggling to keep up. That's that's astonishing. I wonder where that's all gone. I mean, someone was saying we should use it to make modules. Maybe we've kicked in some massive module production or. I don't know. But anyway, all that glass seems to have gone somewhere. <laughs> we're now getting through massive quantities of stone, and we appear to have a shortage of it. Okay, another train has come in, and therefore there is some there. So, yes, tr stone is also apparently a bit of, bit of a uh, concern, and therefore the sand that's come pouring up here is insufficient in order to make all of the hydrogen chloride. Now, these probably should all be turned into productivity modules at this point, and probably these ones as well. Um, just to... Just to to get us a, that little bit more out of the sand that's coming through. I oh, know this does show us that when this belt is completely full, um, then we have enough. Then we have enough sand on here to, to, to have all these machines running solidly. Uh, it just turns out that there's not enough, not even remotely enough sand coming through from these pulverizers. So um, yeah, that's um, that's that, that's that's an unexpected problem. Uh, we're going to need. We almost just need twice as much stuff coming out of the core miners. This is this 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 is an, a, a ridiculous level of um, of shortages. I was not aware it was quite this bad with absolutely everything. So uh, yes, I'm quite quite glad I came along and looked into this. <laughs> and that brings you to the end of the um, rather elongated uh, Astro Science Catalog Three saga. So there's been quite a long stream of um, of yaks in that one. So in in, in order to make the um, in order to make one of the one of the cards, we need the other one, another one of the cards. In order to make those, we need the aeroframe scaffolds. In order to make those, I want to do it on Norvis so I can productivity boost it. But in order to do make make them anywhere at all, we need the immersion plate. But in order to get that running faster, we need more um, more rare metals. And in order to do that, we probably need a rare metal mine, which is, seem feels crazy, and also significantly more um, hydrogen production, and therefore hydrogen in, 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 in order to make more hydrogen chloride, which might mean more sand, which might mean more stone. Which might mean upgrades, maybe, um, and other and and more stone mines potentially, because look, that's run out again. Um, yeah, so that's a lot of well, it's just generally a lot, to be honest. <laughs> um, we could probably pull up a few of the um, a few of the uh, pulverizers in here and, and drop some beacons in. So, for example, if we come along with, I could put this. Uh, no, they're all they're all. Uh, I could put it. Yeah, if I put it here, we'd be able to get. It'd be five of them after I ripped up. Or actually, I'll turn better idea. Put it. We we put it in there, uh, there, and then we'd be able to get all six of them. Uh, from, from we're putting the beacon there with just some underground belts. So we could we could drop. Some, it'd be relatively straightforward to speed beacon all of these all of these uh, machines here. The problem is, we would then we would then not have enough um, stone coming in. So we need to upgrade these belts. 
uh, and then we wouldn't have enough stone coming in here so we need to put in some more stone mines and, and you, you can see how the problem would sort of extend further uh, further and further back up the uh, back up the chain but that's what Factorio is all about so I think I think probably upgrading this next time is going to be probably the best way to get that sorted so uh, while I'm while I'm talking about Astro Science, I might as well cover um, Astro 2 because I've done a few little bits and pieces up here just to make this run a little bit more uh, a little bit more effective. I've put in a few more machines that I was talking about beforehand. Uh, so this is now run this will now run a little bit faster, uh, not enormously so. I could possibly speed module them, but to be honest, I reckon that once we get yeah, as you can see here, we are now starting to fill up the buffers in these warehouses. Um, here we've got now got uh, one, two, we've got 130 four um, broad ast broad astro catalogs okay that's not quite a train load yet but it's getting it's getting that way to the point where we're starting to fill up a buffer and the fill up the train reasonably quickly we'll see how that goes we do still have a crazy crazy number of astro one catalogs but again talk about that later um this uh what do we call it inserter is a little bit sad because it doesn't have power um we've moved on I, one of the most exciting things we, i did actually i'll, I'll, I'll brief, brief brief tangent <laughs> over here i've now started making the um the what they call the uh, pylon substations and these are the advanced space exploration advanced substations they have a massive ridiculous coverage area and you can also and they also don't need to be placed on anything you just have them floating loose in space so they're they're amazing uh, they take a bit to build they take holmium cable aeroframe poles concrete more beryllium sure fine but they are so totally worth it because they are amazing and i've got them going into a presumably got them going into a red chest somewhere but i can't see where at the moment Nope. These are the these are the no these are ah, these are the space these are the space pylons. These are the space pylon substations that are being put in there. So we don't care about these ones. We just care about these ones that are being put into a box up here, because uh, they require whole also require holmium solenoids, which is another thing. That's another thing that requires rare metals, and that is why that one stopped. Oh dear. Oh no, it hasn't. It stopped because it's got enough of them. But it yeah, rare metals is potentially going to be an issue here. Um, and then here we can make those and some batteries and some um, processing units into the into the uh, sp 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 pylon sub into, into the pylon substations and those are amazing. And so we've got 200 of them in here because we're gonna guess we'll, we'll use a reasonable number of them up. Um, I'm a little bit concerned about the supply of those advanced batteries um, because I don't think we're actually bringing that. I don't think that we we're ordering them and having them brought up in on mass from Norv Norvis. We just happen to have a big pile of them, so I've just started using them. Uh, so this will this will run out in in a little while, and then we'll go. Oh dear, why didn't we fix that? You see, there we go. There's the end of the there's the end of the supply on the on the bus. Uh, so we'll go. Oh, why why haven't we got these being delivered properly? And then we'll blame Tristan because it's on the train system and he made them and all that sort of all those sort of reasons. Anyway, uh, this just comes down to me saying that yes, I've started using the pylon substations. They are amazing. Look at that coverage area, and you can put them out floating just in the in the middle of space like this. And then it turns out that you don't really connect to one. They still need to connect to stuff. And this one is a ghost because it's outside the Roboport network, and so it hasn't been placed. So in the in, in the meantime, I should probably put in um, a large pylon there like that. Now, there we go, that that, that that inserter is now happy and can be and can run and we can start making the catalog twos a little bit more quickly. That wasn't the main thing though, so I, yes, I increased that. I, I put in some more of the uh, gravimetric facilities along here in order to make the um, gravitational lensing data and we're going to be needing that for Astro 3 as well, so it's a good thing we've got lots of these machines. We will definitely be needing those. I then noted that these these uh, telescopes were running incredibly slowly and, all, and, and having all kinds of problems. And it's and I was, I was getting ready to go in and check it a bit more carefully, and assuming I was going to need to put in a load more of them, stretch them out over here. But no, it turned out actually that was a coolant problem again. So you know, once again, the um, astro the astro science being um, difficult because of the coolants has, has reared its ugly head once more. So I came over here. It turned out that we didn't have enough of the hypercoolers making the uh, the super chilled thermofluid, so we'd run out of this stuff. So I put in a load more of these, and I didn't have enough of these, so I put in some more of these ones making the cold. Then, uh, that, that, that was fairly straightforward. Then I discovered that this pipe here was completely full and we weren't able to get rid of the warm fast enough. Uh, and I ended up having to put in a split in the pipe here. So we've, we've got a gap and then this one, and then all the machines further along here are pumping it out down a separate pipe, this one over here. So we've now got two pipes worth of, um, of warm thermofluid being brought back and dumped into this, cont into this container over here. The other very interesting thing I noticed about this is that, okay, this is, this is a 200,000 container, uh, and we've got it set at the moment, so it's being topped up to uh, 30,000 from the station over here. So this should never go below 30,000 as long as there's a bit in the, available in the tanks over here, and this should never go empty because there's, we're making it over on the other side of the base, and the train should be keeping it uh, topped up. But 
well, <laughs> the, uh, we had an interesting, it, it, it turned out to not be a problem in the end, fortunately, but it could have been a problem in that uh, because all of, when, as all of these are running, they, they have quite large buffers of thermofluid in them. So you can see there's a thousand uh, warm here, about 600 and something uh, cool, uh, cool. And then in these ones, these have buffers as well. Okay, they're, they're much, much smaller, but there's still a thousand on the output there and a thousand on, about a thousand on the output here as well. So those slowly dribble out and go into these tanks as, they, as it gets used up. But if you get into a point where all of your machines are running, are running flat out, and they're using this, the, the, they're using the colder ones up faster than you can replenish them, then that means these tanks empty out into through the machines. All of these buffers, all these thousands of buffers, are empty out into in, 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 as well because it gets used up, and then you find it all gets heated up by the telescopes as they use it and dropped back into this thing here. So this tank had got up to about 180,000 because all of these buffers had emptied. In fact, let's have a let's have a quick look. So, how many how many of these have we got? We've got 58 hypercoolers over here. So that's 58,000 extra uh, thermofluid that could potentially have been dumped out into the system, plus the 50,000 that's in these two tanks. And then potentially, well, actually, we didn't we didn't we didn't have any problems with the cool. So these ones all had their buffers full. But if, but if we ever got to the point where we were um, pulling it through faster than anything could keep up, then we would have a massive overflow up here and a problem here as well. So you do need a big buffer on your warm thermofluid in order to make sure that when you swing over to using more than you're producing, temp even if it's just temporarily, you've got somewhere to dump all of that excess as it pours out of these buffers. And that's not really a problem I'd thought about before. Fortunately, we didn't. I didn't run into it actually being a problem, but, it, but I easily could have done. It's, um, it's one of those things that it could, could easily have, have, have clogged the whole system up um, and, uh, and caused some unexpected, uh, some unexpected problems. And I think that's a good place to end the episode. So uh, I've talked about basically. I spent the whole time talking about um, astro, astro science because it's, you know it's, it's the one I've been doing, so it's the one I have the most familiar familiarity with, the one where I've seen the problems the most. So it, I, it's fairly natural that I talk about it the most, I, I guess. But my apologies to everyone else that I've just completely dominated this episode by looking at the at the various yaks involved in the Astro Three, and then and then how the Astro Two was fixed up as well, and and, and, and a few tangents here and there as well. So as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and. And there'll be another. There'll be the, another one tomorrow where I shall go through and talk about a bit more about what everyone else has got up to during this uh, during this trying times. <laughs> and uh, there has been lots, of, plenty of progress from everyone else as well. So there's, there is lots to talk about. We shall be back with another stream on Monday. So come along at 7:30 p.m. UK time for a uh, for, the, for the next part of the stream. Uh, check out maybe check out the uh, channel sponsor as well. That's uh, Trefoil.be. If you use the code Lawrence Plays on checkout, you can get 20% off your first month of a game server uh, game server hosting service. There we go. Those words make sense in that order. Uh, and then along on Wednesday, when we are, uh, I'm getting very close now to finishing off the original um, XCOM. So we'll see how that goes. And um, and if you want if you want to be part of the XCOM too, then make sure you're on the uh, on the Discord because I'll be t I'll be talking telling everyone how to make their own uh, characters. For at some point in the, in the not too distant future. In fact, that, might, that video might already have come out. Who knows? And there's also various Factorio videos coming out every Tuesday. Depending on whether you're a supporter or not, you'll see, you'll see them at different times. The supporters get early access to them to say thank you. Um, but they will be they will be coming out at a, at a steady rate. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this episode, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.